It's a thrilling sight, isn't it, Sam? Yes, sir. These jets come aboard pretty hot. How do those new squadrons look to you? They look fine, Captain. Just fine. What's on your mind, Dan? Worried about something? No, sir. I just remember it. Watching these boys come aboard now is almost like living it over again. I was on this ship before. I know you were. The same lady, long before she went into mothballs, of course. Me and a couple of the same officers we have aboard now. We were all here together. It seems like a long time ago. Fall of 44, when they came aboard just like this. They were to be my babies. They'd never met me, but I'd been assigned as their squadron skipper. I have to admit, I was a little fearful about what I'd been sent. In those days, training was hectic, nerves were jumpy, and the fighting was getting tougher and tougher. The first one aboard was Joe Rogers, a JG from the fleet who decided he wanted wings instead of being gunnery officer on a cruiser. He was an Annapolis graduate, had seen a lot more Navy than the others, and was a hero to the group. I think some of those kids even imagined he was going to be their skipper once they got to sea. I figured Joe was an all right guy and probably knew his job. The squadron brought its own entertainment unit. The unit was one man, Ed Kelly. He'd been part of a string trio in civilian life. Then there was Snake Ips McKay. When he joined the Navy, Notre Dame's football team lost its star halfback. The judge was another one of my new boys. He was a law student, serious and intelligent couple of qualities that no pilot should be without. And Longfellow, he was a poet turned pilot, and not a bad combination either. He's being waved off. What's the matter with him?
Who's the stunt flyer? Ensign Barney Smith, sir. Boys call him Barney Oldfield. He used to drive a racing car at home. He disobeyed his wave off. He could have wrecked every plane on deck. Yes, sir. I guess he's a little over anxious. His brother was killed in the Philippines. Can't wait, huh? Something like that, sir. I guess you know, Mr. Rogers, you're my new executive officer. Yes, sir. Very well. Your first official order is to tell Ensign Barney Smith he's just been grounded. Two minutes and I'm grounded. You don't think it's permanent, do you? Of course not, Barney. It doesn't mean a thing. But well, they'll just keep you decked for a couple of days to teach you a lesson. Ah, what are you worrying about? They can't do this to you. Yeah? Well, they did. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, Mr. Rogers. What's in your mind? Well, sir, it's about Ensign Smith. Yes? I hope you won't think I'm sticking my oar in, Skipper, but I wondered if it'd be all right if I said something in his behalf. Well, you're free to speak any time. Remember that. Sit down. Thank you, sir. What I wanted to say was, well, you'll be meeting the boys for the first time. By boys, you mean the new squadron, huh? Yes, sir. I went along with them all through their training. Ottumwa, St. Mary's, Pensacola, the whole route. I know them pretty well, and there's not a dud in the outfit. Let's see if I've got it right. You came from the fleet. You were already an officer while they were still cadets? Yes, sir. You wore a stripe and a half on your sleeve? You're Annapolis? Most of them aren't. So you played big brother to the boys. You probably had just enough weight to get them out of minor scrapes now and then. Well, there were a couple of times when... You were a leader in their eyes, and with good reason. So today, you came aboard ship swinging with everything you had to protect your boys. Anything wrong with that, Mr. Collier? No, just that it makes my job a little tougher for me. Every time I give them an order that you may not agree with, you'll feel yourself personally offended. I'm in the Navy to take orders. I'll follow every one you give, and I'll back you up to the hilt with the rest of the squadron. Good. As for Ensign Smith, there are any number of important jobs for aviators aboard ship that do not entail actual flying. Yes, sir. Please ask the squadron to be in the ready room after dinner, Mr. Rogers. I, uh, I want to meet them. Aye, aye, sir. Attention! Gentlemen, this is Commander Collier, our new squadron leader. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, sir. As you were. Smoking lamp is lit. Your former skipper's laid up in the hospital, so I've been ordered to take his place. Keep your noses clean, fly straight, and we're all going to get along just fine. All you've got to remember is that we're a team, something like a football team. It's just that our stakes are a little bit higher. I'll be calling the signals. But we're not going to have any stars on this team. And certainly no aerial acrobats. Ensign Smith came close to precipitating a full-scale crash this afternoon. He was waved off, but came in anyway. I guess he wanted to prove that he was an individualist. Well, that's one thing we're not going to have in this squadron. An individualist is dangerous to the group and to himself. In fiction, he's invariably the hero who breaks formation to fly out and shoot down some zero he spotted. In reality, nine times out of ten, he's killed for his efforts, and he's left the squadron one plane and one pilot short. Well, that is one kind of flyer the Navy can't afford to have. This squadron must and will fly as a unit. Well, gentlemen, I guess that's about all for now. Lieutenant Rogers is our exec, and whatever questions you may have, I'm sure he will be glad to answer for you. 
Good night, gentlemen. See you in the morning. Anybody feel chilly? I think I'd sunk the ship. Wow! Is he all Navy? You know what I think the skipper is? All right, belay that, you guys. Just remember, the skipper's flown more combat missions than any man on this ship. And he ranks third in the whole Navy in enemy planes shot down. How does the new squadron look to you? It's one of the best I've ever seen come through. A little rough around the edges and a trifle anxious, maybe, but that's what makes good pilots. And what about this Anson Smith? Do you want to discipline him officially? No, sir. I've decked him, and in his case, I think that that will be discipline enough. Well, I'll leave it to your judgment. Good luck, Dan. Thank you, sir. Oh, Mr. Rogers, I have just arranged for Barney Smith to be assigned to the squadron office. Well, he's going to be awful disappointed. A lot of jobs aboard ship are just as important as flying. Yes, I know, sir, but you see, Barney's wings mean more to him than they do to any of us. No matter how important a job he gets, I'm afraid he's never going to see it that way. I'm afraid he's going to have to see it that way. He reminds me of the great Stoneface. Mr. Stoneface, please. Ah, oh, it's too bad the Navy doesn't let you guys pick your own skipper. He's fond of Mr. Collier. Yeah, what are you doing? Already bucking for your half-stripe, Longfellow. Hey, now, don't misquote me. As far as I'm concerned, the skipper's a... I'll write a poem that sums up the whole thing. They can't court-martial you for writing poems. You want to bet? Yeah. Like Cyrano de Bergerac, I'll cut him to ribbons with verse. You got the nose for it. But not the talent. Ah. Uh. Any luck? You go to work at the desk, Barney. Now, it'll be a long war. You'll be back in the air. Well, what are you guys a cut up about? <laughs> <laughs> Never saw any aircraft practice before, huh? Enjoying yourself? Fine exec you are. Why don't you tell us what all the shooting was about? I tried to till I got run over. I never knew lawyers could run so fast. You must get it from chasing Dark ambulances. Control. Cease firing. Don't tell me. Dark I control. don't Cease believe firing. it. Hey, 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 what are you doing on this ship? <laughs> he always said he was going to get on board a carrier. Yeah, yeah. You mean to say you didn't see us come aboard? Well, I've been in sick bay, quarantine. I had the mumps. For you, it figures. Yeah, yeah. They would have transferred me, of course, but you see. But, but we're in the middle of the Pacific. Hey, yeah, yeah. I mean, sir. <laughs> what they should have done is thrown you overboard. You know, mumps are contagious. Oh, yeah, Willie. Hello, Joe. Uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> You're the uh, squadron skipper? No, no, I'm the exec. Well, of course I'm dumb, but for my dose, sir, you ought to be the skipper. The way you handle us guys at yeah, Pensacola... Yeah, 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 uh, uh, What's your job on the ship, Willie? I'm the hot papa. The what? The little man in the asbestos suit that pulls you guys out when you come in on fire. <laughs> hey! Well, it's nice to see you, Willie. You must have a lot of pull getting a nice, soft job like that. Old home week? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Willie was with us in Pensacola, but he busted out. When he left, he said he was going to put in for carrier duty, just so maybe we could all be together again sometime. 
Just goes to show that it's a small Navy after all. Well, it looks pretty big to me. Uh, pardon me, gentlemen. I got things to do. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Rogers, hereafter, see that your officers are in proper uniform when they appear on deck. Aye, aye, sir. And if you think you're ready to fly in combat, you're mistaken. Your takeoffs and landings are sloppy, and your formation flying is some of the most miserable I've ever seen. You're going to keep practicing, and after that, you're going to practice some more. All right, now let's go. this and I'll be a dead poet. They're the best kind. Oh, Come on. Am I going to sleep tonight? Me too. Mm. Don't wake me for breakfast, Judge. You can have mine. Right. Hey, Joe. Are you awake? Yeah. Well, you know, if it keeps on like this, I'm not going to be able to make one word rhyme with another. What keeps on like what? Night and day, racing across the Pacific. Where are we going? War. You don't say. Getting itchy. Yeah. Oh, it's 
Not that I'm a hero or anything like that. It's just all this waiting is driving me bugs. Guess it's always like that before your first combat action. Well, that's right. You saw action on that cruiser, didn't you? Not air combat. Hey, Joe. You mean you're nervous, too? Well, what do you know? Hey, hey, listen. They serve us good food, lots of beans and potatoes. But what we'd like most is some luscious tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote that? One of the pilots. He used to write these jingles for me at Pensacola to send to my girl. Personally, I don't care for tomatoes. Oh. Seems to me all those flyboys are getting awfully jumpy lately. That's waiting for action. That can't be long now. No, but they're waiting for it. Well, I wish they'd tell us where we're headed. Sailor boy, we're there. This is the South Pacific. Yeah, but we're supposed to be on a mission or something. Well, I ain't flying a plane or anything, but I'm getting bogey myself with all this weight. I've never been in action yet, either. We'll leave you know when it starts. Yeah. Something on your mind, Mr. Rogers? Yes, sir, there is. What's bothering you? Well, when I was in cruisers, sir, we generally had some idea of where we were going. You're not fishing, are you? Oh, no, sir, I'm not asking for any secret information. It's just that... I think you ought to say something to the squadron. Give them a talk. These kids have never been in combat before. They're bound to be jittery until they get that first baptism of fire under their belts. I could talk to them until I was black in the face. And when I got through, they'd still be jittery. I know what the feeling is, but there's nothing that can be done about it. Didn't I say once that you were like a big brother to the boys? Well, maybe you're trying to be the most popular man in the Navy. You mean because I look out for them? These kids deserve some help. They haven't had either the experience or the training that you and I have had. Well, then let them sweat it out, like every other flyer's had to do before them. OK, Joe? You're the skipper, sir. So after I was born, my father had to give up law school. You know, what's he doing now? Selling real estate. It's practically killing him. He and Mom always hoped I'd be a lawyer. You know, it's getting so you got a poem in this paper every other day now. Well, what's the matter with that? Every ship's got a poet laureate. Yeah, but all you ever write about is women. What are you trying to do, drive us all nuts? Billy, why don't you go down and get your guitar? I'm not in the mood. Oh, come on. What's the matter? Well, if you must now know... Now hear this. Rosebud Squadron, report to your ready room. Now hear this. Rosebud Squadron, report to your ready room. Well, there's your island. Gentlemen, I know you'll be glad to hear that I can at last tell you our mission. We've been ordered into a combined operation of land, air, and sea forces. We're going back to the Philippines, back to Bataan and Corregidor, to support the invasion forces of General MacArthur. Sir, is that still a little while off? Well, maybe, Kelly. Why? Well, I sort of hoped we were going to see action right away. We are. While on our way to join the fleet, we're going to pause first and divert our attention to a fat cluster of enemy shipping. Intelligence has reported a force of cargo freighters, transports, Ammunition ships lying at anchor in a snug little harbor not 600 miles away. So we've turned off our normal course and are heading at top speed toward that objective. Now, they don't know we're coming, so the advantage will be ours. We're going to hit them. We're going to hit them hard. All planes will be ready to take off at daylight. Now, this is how we'll proceed. Here's our island. Our position is practically this. Okay, Barney. 
feel good. Swell. Get a tanker for me, will you? You can count on it. What are you doing, Longfellow? Writing a poem? Not this time, Barney. I wish you were going with us. Oh. Better get some sleep, kid. Who needs it? playing with the band, we never had child of four a.m. <laughs> you know, now that we're finally going into combat, I feel a lot better. I wish we'd get started. All pilots report at once to your ready room. All pilots you got your report wish. at once to your ready room. All pilots report at once to your ready room. All pilots report at once to your ready room. Red lights don't do much for your looks. They certainly don't. But they sure help you to see a lot better on these night flights. And all flight water station.
Touchdown. He's still afloat, Snake Hips. Let's see if I can add the extra point for you. Tonnage on that ammunition ship, any idea? I guess about 7,000. 7,000. What about you, Mr. Rogers? I got a 10,000 ton tanker, the Mitsui class. Oh, brother. I got one small fishing boat. <laughs> <laughs> Bring any fish back with you? No. Judge and I bagged a troop ship and a freighter. Did a little strafing here and there. Maybe you do better next time. <laughs> okay, fellas, that's all. All in all, a mighty good day, Dan. Unbelievably good. Sounds as if we sank everything they had, without losing a single plane of our own. It's about time. They've been pushing us around long enough. Just like Saturday night of the duck shoot, boys. How we do, Joe? Good? Look good to me. Not to me. I was robbed. How sad. Two guys sneaked in and grabbed a destroyer right out from under me. <laughs> well, what's everybody so happy about? Bagging so many ships, Skipper. You fellas sank a lot of shipping today. But don't forget that they were almost undefended sitting ducks. Wasn't much more than a training strike. Now, I have no complaint with your flying. Or, for that matter, with your firing accuracy. What bothers me is that you were briefed to keep a tight radio silence. And yet it seemed that almost everybody had something to say. Kelly opened up first, then Snake Ibsen Judge had a little game of football. Perhaps you can enlighten me as to just how I'm supposed to give you orders when you're talking all the time. Maybe you think this war is a picnic. Well, it isn't. It's a war that can't be won unless it's fought seriously and intelligently by each one of us. We're a unit, not a band of rover boys off in a lark, each one for himself. On our next strike, gentlemen, I will expect a different kind of performance. How do you like that guy? 
I don't. What's he want anyway? You heard the man. All right, lay off him, all of you. Just remember, he's the skipper and he gives the orders. Well, he must have been fairly good. We didn't have any casualties. Hey, there weren't any casualties. Pat? Makes you feel funny. You know it's somebody's got to get it sometime, and you begin wondering who's going to be first. Knock it off, will you? That goes for me, too. All right, all right. Come in. I was expecting you. I suppose every man has his own way of maintaining discipline. That's right. You feel my way's all wrong, don't you? It was our first mission. The boys felt good about it. You feel I'm riding them? Frankly, sir, I do. Today's mission was one of the softest touches you're ever going to get. The tremendous enemy losses were about to give our fellows a false confidence. They might go up next time feeling fat and smug and run into a slaughterhouse of zeros. I want them on edge all the time. Ready, hard, and alert all the time. That's the only way I know to save men's lives. Maybe you know a better way. You can beat a horse into obedience, or you can do it with kindness. Both methods usually get the same results. Is that all? That's all. Mr. Rogers? The trouble with you and with every other pilot in this squadron is that you don't believe in following the rules. Rules that were come by the hard way by men whose experiences have proved them. Well, you're going to follow them from now on. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Light is her young heart, light may it be. Come where my love lies dreaming. Dreaming the happy hours. Dreaming the happy hours away. Come. Where my love lies dreaming, so sweetly dreaming, the happy hours away. He's on the radar. CIC to bridge. CIC to bridge. Bogey's on the radar. One, three, five, fifty miles. Get those quarters. All hands land your battle station.
Aren't we going up after them? Too late for that. They're here. send another batch out after us. We better reinforce the combat air patrol. I can supply the pilots, Captain, but I'm worried about that flight deck. We'll take care of that. All right, now that is plan four. Any questions? This is plan five. If the bogeys come in split into two equal flights, which is one of their favorite methods, I'll detach one section. It will be the duty of this section to divert the first enemy flight. Not to engage them, but to divert them. Here, the rest of our squadron will continue as cover for the carrier and will take on the second enemy flight. Is all of this clear? When do we take off, Skipper? Dawn, if the flight takes repaired by then.
Rosebud 1, this is Rosebud 4. Tally ho, 10 o'clock. Let's go. This is Rosebud 1. Take another look, Rosebud 4. There's another group of bandits at 2 o'clock. Divided they fall. Let's take them one flight at a time. This is Rosebud 1, Rosebud 4. Take your section to carry out Plan 5 on Starboard Bandits. Plan 5? You heard the order, carry it out. Roger. sky full of zeros. Nobody in the squadron even got a scratch. Hey, that's right. Joe, the judge and me took on a whole batch of them. Odds were really against us. Yet all three of us came back safe and sound. Well, everybody's entitled to one miracle. We just got ours at the same time, that's all. Hey, you guys give me the chills. Yeah, man, but it's true. This is worse than waiting to go into combat for the first time. I wonder when the charm's gonna end. Oh, boy. Joe hit the jackpot. Do you hear? No kidding. Yeah. He got three, officially. The gun camera film proved it. The snake hips and the judger got one apiece. Great, huh? Yeah. All I got's a lot of nice pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get on with the game, huh? Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. Where's Joe? Probably on deck, sir. He said he wanted some air. I didn't like the look in his eyes. Hmm. I wonder what's up. I've been looking for you, Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir. You got yourself three planes today. Got you to thank for that, sir. You mean because I sent you on what you felt was a suicide mission? I know the judge and Snake Hips and I were expendable. The carrier had to be protected. You're wrong again. Plan 5 called for a diverting hit-and-run maneuver to draw the bandits off until we could get to you. Yes, sir. Will you explain to me, Commander, how I could divert them without engaging them? Diversion means precisely what it says. A series of hit-and-run passes. It does not mean going round and round in individual dogfights. Do you understand why I sent you in particular into that action? I think I do. Why? I assume because you figured I was the most experienced officer in the outfit. Right. Had I divided the squadron into two equal groups, one each to fight each of their flights, there could have been losses, with zeros getting through to the carrier. I couldn't risk it. I've got no excuses, sir. I guess I got excited. Well, there's no room for excitement in the Navy, Mr. Rogers. You've got to have a sound, calculated reason for everything you do. I've been trying to make that clear to you, but I don't know if it's possible. This morning, you came very close to usurping the authority of your superior. 
just come from the air group commander. He wanted to know if I wish to take disciplinary action against you. And do you, sir? Yes. I'm going to recommend to the air group commander that in the event of something happening to me, he makes somebody other than you the new skipper. You need more seasoning, Mr. Rogers. You're too soft with the squadron. You still don't know how to follow orders. Good night. Good night, sir. You can't fly straight into their teeth and expect to stay in the air very long. As I get it, Skipper, the, the idea is to make a fast pass, then duck. Right. And if you don't get your man, maneuver for another advantageous position before he can. What I'd like is, is to get above a couple of bandits and dive at them before they get set for anything. I think you're beginning to catch on. And remember this. That in a dive, a zero cannot roll out to the right. You straighten me out in a lot of things, Skipper. Maybe now you'll live to be an old man. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll become a big hotshot lawyer. Well, that's all, fellas. I just thought I'd straighten you out on a few tactical errors you made yesterday. Boy, we were lucky to get out alive. Take it easy. Could be I was wrong about that guy. Man, you've been wrong all your life. Well, I'll say one thing for the skipper. He's a flying fool. How'd you like to have a dog fight with that guy? No, thanks. This is right out of the top drawer, and it's a fact. One of the guys is in the captain's cabin, winding the clock, see? And the old man and the navigator are talking. So this guy takes his time winding. So what do you hear? Just look around tomorrow morning. What are we going to see, flying fish? We're joining the whole third fleet. You're kidding. We're heading for some kind of a big operation, huh? Go on, what operation? How long can you stand there winding the clock? <laughs> you guys hear the news? We're joining the fleet tomorrow. That scuttlebutt. It is not. It came right down from topside. What do they know about it? So then at Pensacola, I'm flying an SNJ in formation. When all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. What do you mean, unk, unk? No gas. Some guy in the ground crew had fouled up. So there I am. Hey, I, did you hear the scuttlebutt? Huh? I'm meeting the entire United States Navy tomorrow morning. Oh, kid, I told you. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Ah, forget it. So there I am, going along in formation. And we're just about to turn to the left. No gas in the airplane, you see. And we're just about to turn to the left. <laughs> Rejection slip from the Saturday evening post. I didn't know they printed phone. Oh, Apparently they don't. Man, all I got was a notice from the musicians union. It says I haven't paid my dues. Dearest Dan, we have a son. He weighed eight pounds and one ounce. He's a beautiful little man. And he looks exactly like you, darling. There isn't any doubt at all but that he is a most remarkable baby. Oh, you're so... 
such a good little boy. I wonder if Dan's gotten my letter yet. I hope so. Won't he be proud? He certainly will. And just wait till he sees you. And maybe this time when he comes home, the war will be all over. Dear Barney, no need to tell you how proud your mother and I are of what you're doing out there. I'm sure you know how we felt about losing Spud, but our pride in your achievements is helping to make up for that. You are now both of our sons in one. There are a lot of things I wanted to talk to you about before you left to go overseas, but I kept putting it off, and suddenly I realized you were gone from us. But possibly it's just as well. It was principally about having faith in God and in your country. And I realize now that you already possess all of that. Well, you will have been at sea several weeks by the time you receive this, and I suppose that by now you're a veteran pilot. Do your job well, my son. You just got to let me fly on that Philippine invasion. Joe, won't you talk to the skipper for me? Won't do any good, Barney. But how long are they going to keep me out of the air just because I fouled up once? Barney, calm down. It's only trying to make an example of you. Just doesn't like flyers or kid around, that's all. Well, I don't want to kid around. Just want to get a few zeros. I wonder how long the charm is going to last. There you go on that again. What charm? No casualties yet. What's the matter? All you guys turning superstitious or something? Is that what you call it? sunrise, the battleships and heavy cruisers will commence a pre-invasion bombardment that will continue unabated for three days and nights. Now, during this time, the light cruisers and destroyers will patrol the perimeter of the fleet. They will continue in a constant circle of protection around the heavier ships, fighting off any of the enemy that try to break through. On completion of bombardment, landings will be undertaken in this area. Close air support will be handled by planes from Jeep carriers attached to the 7th Fleet. Our job with the fast carriers will be to keep every enemy plane out of the area. We'll strike all the airfields indicated. Our opposition in the past has been comparatively light. This time, the enemy will be throwing all the air strength he has in this area against us. But if we succeed, our foot soldiers who hit the beaches will succeed. It means that the American flag will fly over the Philippines again.
o'clock. Picnic one. This is Rosebud one. Over. Rosebud one. This is Lipstick one. Go ahead. Many bandits this area need assistance. Over. Roger. Now. Bustle one. Picnic one. Bad guitar I ever saw. Kelly's plane captain fixed it like this. Brought it down to him. Wait a play you something, Joe. What's your favorite? You know by now. September in the rain. 
chaplain just gave him the last rites. Hi, Skipper. Hi, Kelly. Boy, when you're up there in that sky, those Japs are nowhere. You do pretty well yourself. No, man. You're real crazy in a plane. I never saw any... He's up on that throttle. Glad you came down to check me out, Skipper. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed. for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. have been considerable in planes and pilots. We've got to stop all enemy strikes against the fleet before they get started. Tomorrow, we're going back after their airstrips. We're going to bomb and strafe them till we can't get a plane off the ground. All right, fellas. Try and get some sleep.
15 bogeys approaching, sir. See, I see the bridge. 15 bogeys approaching, bearing 350, distance 90. Go to general quarters. General quarters. All hands man your battle station. Too many for us to handle. About 10 too many. You want me to order the fighters back from the shore targets? How soon can they make it? About 20 minutes. We can be sunk by then. Combat air patrol can't handle all those bandits. How many pilots do we have left aboard? Let's see, there's Lieutenant Thompson, Anson Smith, me. This is the air group commander. Lieutenant Thompson, Anson Smith, report to the rating room immediately. Did you hear that? Sure did. I'm gonna fly! It means I'm gonna fly! We'll be outnumbered. But if we get lucky and can shoot straight enough, maybe we can keep this ship from being hit. You mean you're really going up with us? Don't you think I can fly? Well, yes, sir. I knew you could, sir, but... All right. Come on. strike group should be back over the fleet in about four minutes. Four minutes? Four minutes in air combat is a lifetime.
gang. Nice to see you. Hey, it's Barney Oldfield. Hiya, Barney. wrong. Uh, forget it. The squadron's really with you, Skipper. It's home I, all the way. Well, I'm glad to hear it. They're uh, taking me out of the air for a while, Joe. I guess they figure I've had enough combat. They're getting superstitious, maybe. You're the new Skipper. I am. You told the air group commander. I changed my recommendation. Thanks, Dan. That's okay. Now go back and tell them the good news. Yeah. You know, they're not going to think it's good news. I think they will. Well, that's about it. I guess you heard what kind of a skipper Joe turned out to be. One of the best. Afternoon, Captain. Both those replacement squadrons are aboard, Dan. Ensign Mallory, sir. Well, inform Ensign Mallory, he's just been grounded. Aye, sir. Hey, 